good to see you this morning. I mean, these, these are pretty shocking <laughs> figures. The problem is we don't, at this stage, know really quite what long COVID is or quite who's got it and who hasn't. I mean, there's no real diagnosis, is there? It makes it very difficult. I, I, I fully agree. Um, the Office for National Statistics has suggested 2.1 million people um, are down, are suffering from uh, long COVID and obviously um, must express sympathy with people who are suffering from, from this condition. Uh, my mind works back to the 1980s, 1990s, um, that term yuppie flu, which you may remember. Um, and in those days, very similar symptoms were being discussed, you know, fatigue, heart palpitations, uh, brain fog, all these issues. Um, the question for lawyers uh, isn't so much the, the, the label that's attached to these symptoms, but, but the, the effect of the symptoms. Um, and individuals that suffer from symptoms associated and termed long COVID could actually, in, in the workplace, uh, fall into the definition of being uh, disabled people. Um, the, the Equality Act defines uh, a disabled person as somebody who has a physical uh, or mental impairment that has a substantial impact on their ability to carry out day-to-day -day activities. And uh, you mentioned there have been people suffering from long COVID for months. Well, for, for someone to suffer from a disability, it has to be long term, which means over a year. Um, and it's been very interesting uh, how the case law has progressed. In fact, last year in Scotland, a, a caretaker by the name of Mr. Burke was successful uh, before an employment tribunal where he established that the symptoms that he termed to be symptoms of long COVID did constitute a disability. Now, what, once that sort of finding has been made, then employers are under a positive obligation to make reasonable adjustments, etc. Um, so it has been uh, quite interesting and it is an early illness. It has been going for months, but tribunals have already stepped in to say, look, it is the type of condition where people could be afforded additional protection rights if, for example, they're unwell, can't attend work. Um, so employers do need to be careful. Uh, also, probably a bit cynical about this. I can imagine some thinking it's just an excuse to stay off work. Well, uh, yes, uh, you know, we've got that number of 2.1 million. Some, some of these cases will be genuine. Other people might simply be attaching uh, a label. And what lawyers get interested in isn't the label, as I said, which is attached. So someone says, oh, I'm not feeling great. I've got long COVID. Um, you know, the burden of proof in, in the law is on the individual who asserts that they have a disability to prove it. So they would actually have to uh, show their medical records and give evidence as to the impact that their symptoms have uh, on their ability to carry a day to day activity. So some people who claim to have long COVID will be very ill and others less ill. Those whose symptoms aren't substantial and don't impact on their ability to carry out those day to day activities, obviously they, they won't be covered by the relevant legislation. Mm, no, that's an interesting point. Look, James, we've got to leave it there, but really good to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much. Good to much. speak to you too.